Hello there, my name's Dave Allen, I'm good and geeky, and today we're gonna have a look and see what I've been doing with my Raspberry Pi. I've got three of the little buggers now. They're reproducing, they're replicating, they're all over the damn place. Anyway, I have uh, this one called Argonaut, because it's in the Argo case, which I bought, and it's running off an SSD drive, which is inside there, an M2, and it's all looking pretty good. I've just been down to the post office to go and collect another little packet. It's an SSD drive, and this time I'm going to be connecting it using a USB 3 connector. So I want to put that onto the other Raspberry Pi I've got and see how that goes. And the idea is, is that when you're running it from an SSD drive rather than the SD card, it's a lot faster. I've already seen that. There's a speed difference of about maybe sort of five or six times faster, maybe even more than that. Anyway, let's have a look and see what I've been doing with the Raspberry Pi. So here we are in my Raspberry Pi, and let me show you a few things I've done with the Raspberry Pi to set it up a little bit better. One of the things you need to do is to set up the terminal, and let's just go into terminal now. And I've set this up so that it works with ZSH instead of bash. I've still got bash available, so if I type in bash now, it'll change to bash. So I can tell I'm running in bash. I've got a different colour system on here with the power level 10k which is set up on there. And you can tell it's bash because there's that on there as well, okay? So uh, let's change it back to ZSH. And also you want to set it up so you've got oh my ZSH as well. So after you've set up ZSH on your computer there on your um, Raspberry Pi, go to this one here and you can install oh my ZSH. And it all makes it look a lot, lot better than it does with the without it. And you've got plugins and you've got themes as well to make it look even better. And I'm also running a thing called Power Level 10K, which is why the terminal looks like this and not like um, an ordinary sort of, sort of terminal where you don't sort of see that much information. Then what I want to do is you want to set up as well this thing called EXA. Now, Exa basically what this will do is will give you a uh, listing of the files with this header at the top here, which is useful. And then you've got the colours underneath, and you've also got the permissions, the sizes, and everything else. And it just makes the um, terminal a whole lot better to use when you're looking at your files. So you've got colours, more information, and it works pretty well too. And you've also got a tree view as well. Okay, so I've changed into a different folder there. And as you can see with uh, this here, this shows me that I've got Git working on this as well. So let's do an LS on this one here. And as you can see, I've got a few things in there. I've got uh, assets, journals, logseek, and so on. And let's do um, tree. Let's see if this works. Okay, so you can see there I've got a tree view of what's in that folder there. A lot more information about what's in there. Um, I've also got this set up so you can put some alias in there. So I've got uh, Lumos which is a Harry Potter thing. And what this does is I've set up an alias and it shows me the files that are invisible hidden files. So those files there don't normally show, but if I type in Lumos, then it will show. There's also a alias setup so that if I type in zsh config, this will go into the uh, application Nano. And with this Nano, I can go in there and I can see what things I've done in there. So for instance, I've got this here, which is set part of the setup for my, my ZSH. This is the uh, power level 10K, which is telling me the theme that I'm using for uh, for this here. And if I go further down here, you can see here the aliases that I've set up. So this is the alias I've just used to get into this file to do some editing. So basically I'll type in ZSH config, and what it does, it types in this here instead, because ZSH config is much easier to remember than what I've got to type in here. And also, I've got it set up so there's there's a Lumos one there. So basically, what that does is it uh, sets it up with a long um, amount of information, header and A. And what I can actually do as well is I can bring this all into one command. So if I go to this one here, let's, so let's change this Lumos one to make it a little bit uh, less verbose. And I've got to go to there. So I delete all the stuff in front of that, and delete all the stuff in front of that as well. I'll do just the same. In fact, I could make these ones here smaller, shorter as well. So let's just tidy it up a bit and see what that gives me. Okay, so let's do Control and X. 
type in Y to tell it to save and come out of that. Okay, so you can see it looks a whole lot different there because I've taken the X off there. So let's go back into the config again. And I don't need the LS in there. Run LS again. Okay, so basically this time I've got it all set up so that it's um, a grid. And I don't want it as a grid, I want it as one long line. So how do I do that? So let's go back into the uh, config file again. I think what I want to put in there is a number one. Okay, let's try this and see if it works. Okay, so that's better. I've got a line of text, which is what I was looking for. Another application that you want to set up in here is uh, quite useful. It's called PyApps. And with PyApps, you get a way of installing application, which is much better than the Raspberry Pi way of doing it. Because let's go to the Raspberry Pi one, and I'll show you there. Let's go to Preferences, Remove Software. So if I do add remove software with this one here, so say if I want to install GIMP, for instance. Okay, so I've typed in GIMP there. It takes a long while to go through this here, do lots of queries, lots of messing around there. And then when it comes up, it's going to give me a whole lot of list of things there that, what do I need out of this? I've got animation package. I've got all the whole lot of stuff in there that I don't really need to look at. There's more things in this, of course, but at the same time, it's um, a bit annoying. So let's just close that there. And if instead I go to this one here, instead I go to uh, PyApps. So if I want to uh, put on GIMP on this, I'll go to Creative Arts. GIMP has been all in installed already, but all I'd need to do is to click on that there. Give it a second. And then I can click on Install, or in this case it would be Uninstall because I've already got it on there. So uh, using this is a good way to install and uninstall applications. And it's much neater than the Raspberry Pi way of doing it. I can add other terminals in there if I want to. So let's put uh, Tabby on there. Let's just show you how it works. So here we are looking at uh, details of Tabby and I'm going to click on install. Now what it does is to um, install it, it brings up this terminal output, shows all that's going on in the background there. Basically what it is, it's a script file that's running to uh, install this in the background. Obviously another application I needed to set up on this here to be able to do the screen recording was to set up a thing called, let's go back on this one here, have to see if it's in here, and it should be in multimedia maybe, and it's simple screen recorder. It's working quite good, I quite like it. So that's one there that's quite good. Another one that I think is worth having as well is a thing called Flame, and it's a way to do um, snapshots. You can do snapshots with screen recorder, but I think it works better with this uh, flame one. Flame, click on OK. OK, flame shot. So that's one there. That's one. That one's worth having there. I like that. It's a um, great way of getting a, uh, a screenshot of my uh, monitor. Another thing that I've got, of course, is to go and get uh, Sync Thing working. Now with Sync Thing, the way that this works is that it uh, works across the local network and um, these computers that I've set up. I'll set it up so that these um, computers are connected. This is my iMac, this is my um, Raspberry Pi 3, and this Code Pi here, I've just been working with that there, which is why it's disconnected, and I've got a setup sync thing on that one there. But with Wally here, what I can do is I can send files across to Wally, uh, because I've got this Argonaut 1 here saved across all these three computers. And the reason I've done that across these three computers is so because is because I like having my information with me in all places. And so I'm using Obsidian for that. Let's go into Obsidian. So I can make a change on this one here. And then when I go into the Obsidian application on my iMac or on any of the other computers, CodePy, whatever else I'll connect it with SyncThing, it will be synchronized across. So let's go back into Terminal. Um, another thing I've got set up is this uh, Zoxide. So if I do Z and then Arg, that will go into Argonaut. It uh, knows that, uh, it sort of guesses the rest of the, um, the folder name. So if I do that, it's going to go into Argonaut 1. And then if I do LS in this one here, you can see that this file, which I put into the folder in Argonaut 1, has been brought across to the Wally computer. Now another thing that I like to set up as well is a thing called Tmux. So let's go into Tmux now. This is a terminal emulator 
Um, the reason I like using this is because it gives me a chance to run more than one terminal window in one application as it were. And also what you can do with this is I can close this terminal and then I can bring it back again and it will open up what I had running before I closed it down. Okay, so what I can do this if I do control B and then C, that opens up a new window for me. And then once I've got a new window open, what I can also do is I can open up another pane. If I do um, control B and then that one there, that's giving me another pane of uh, to look at. So I can do um, LL in this one here. And then if I'm in, working this one here, so if I go um, control B and then L, that's to me back to the other window. If I do control B, L again, if I go to the other window, if I do control B and then Q, I can see that the other, the other window is uh, numbered zero and it's the one with nano in it. Control B, N, that's back into nano. How cool is that? So it's handy to, if you, if you have to have a few things running at the same time, you can do it using Tmux and just one instance of the terminal. Okay, so there's my MD file there. And if I go into this one here into Obsidian, there's the file I've just that's the file I've just made. And I can use the slash command to get some headers up there, look. Toggle heading, that's the one I want there, look. And I want that to be a heading two. So there's my header two, and then I can put text into this here and this is just the lovely way that Obsidian works. And as you know with um, this here, what I can do is if I've got that selected and I type in the open square brackets twice, that'll make that into a link to a document called text. So if I click on that there now, it opens up the new document called text, which is going to be in the pages section here. So there it is in the pages section. That's where they're supposed to go. Here we are in terminal. And I'm going to go into the uh, Wally computer. Got to put the password for this one there. Change directory. Got into Argonaut for me there. And if I do ls there now. And the file I just created over on the Argonaut computer, the Raspberry Pi Argonaut, has come across into this one here. And if I go into Pages, so do Z, Pages, do LS. In this list here, there's the one that I'm just working on. This is Dave Allen showing you a few things I've done to set up this Raspberry Pi. I've set up ZSH, my ZSH, Exa, Zoxide, Tmux, Simple Screen Recorder, Pi Apps, Sync thing and Obsidian and a few other things as well. And it's starting to look like a real computer. And it's just a little Raspberry Pi. Bye bye now.